<clears throat> okay, yeah. Until you come and do it, you don't know what the hardest means. The hardest is for me. I feel physically very fine. Behind my knee bugs me a little from such a long uphill slope, but uh, physically very fine, but mentally very, very long summer day, you know. At a point where emotionally you would be standing on top of Mount Everest shaking hands, you still ha you still couldn't even see the top of Kenshin. So you just keep down and, and inside I look and you ask yourself, are you safe? Are you going to survive? So this expedition, of course, being where it is, the most remote Himal and stuff, I'll never forget it. Uh, of course, I'll never come back. <laughs> it's uh, it's enough to like survived and been here and done it. Himalayas, magnificent Himalayan mountains. The eternal land of snow above the clouds. The land that calls humanity to peace, compassion, modesty, and wisdom. Few of us have breathed her air, felt the scents, the winds. Few have trodden his stones and waters. Few will ever do that. But from our homes, of our hyper cities, we believe we are the masters of the earth. But the Himalayas still resist the judgment of our urban prejudices today. And they remind to every traveler who ever gets there of the greatness and silent wisdom of the universe, written in every stone and prayer of the Tibetan monks, carried by the wind to the heights. The Himalayas are the highest mountain range on the planet. A giant not found anywhere else. 14 mountain peaks exceed the height of 8,000 meters and pierce the sky, making a bridge between Earth and Paradise. The winds, the cold, the ice, the loneliness of this desert make it inaccessible to man, mostly all the time. Just a few weeks in spring and autumn, teams of daredevils go climbing these deserts. But for this very reason, the Himalayan mountains are coveted by all mountaineers. One of the most inaccessible places on the border between the state of Sikkim of India and Nepal, 250 meters lower than Everest, rises the Kanchenjunga Peak at 8,586 meters. It is the third largest in the Himalayas and of the globe. Kanchenjunga is not a well-known mountain. Although it is the third highest on Earth, it lacks the fame of Everest and the prestige of K2 the only two higher peaks. Kanchenjunga is a distant mountain. Just to get to the base camp requires a difficult, long approach march of about 10 days. It is one of the least climbed peaks of 8,000 meters, only second after Annapurna. For every 25 people trying to climb Everest, less than one is trying to reach the top of Kanchenjunga. The Himalayan lands are strongly spiritually rooted. There is still a living, deep connection between the mountains and the locals. For generations, there have been local legends, both in Sikkim and in Nepal, that on the slopes of Kanchenjunga exists a valley of immortality, a place of material abundance, spiritual harmony, and eternal life for the Tibetan believers. 
This place is inaccessible, with uncertain location, guarded by storm, fog, and snow leopards. In the Tibetan Buddhist cultural tradition, this valley is known as the Beo Dimashan. And also, in the Kanchenjunga lands, perhaps had lived or still lives an anthropomorphic mountain creature, a type of yeti or rakshasa called Zo Nassau. A British geological expedition in 1925 even saw a bipedal creature. Then asking the locals, found out it was called the Kanchenjunga demon. In 1955, Joe Brown and George Band, part of a British expedition led by Charles Evans, managed to climb Kanchenjunga Peak for the first time. A performance that would become a legend in the mountaineering world due to its difficulty. Times have passed and in 2022, an international expedition is trying to get there again on the southwest face of the mountain. It's been two years since the coronavirus pandemic blocked the plans of mountaineers. The world is tired, worn out, and recovering slowly from the shock of the pandemic. So everyone is eager for action. Two Romanians are also part of the international team for Kanchenjunga 2020, Tiudor Tulpan and Catalan Mastan. Tiudor Tulpan is an experienced climber. As usual, he keeps a log of the expedition for Kanchenjunga. An expedition that will have everything that means an ascent on 8,000er. Effort, patience, success, and bad incidents. All members of the expedition are meeting in the capital of Nepal, in Kathmandu. From here, they will travel to Himalayan mountains. John Gill is the leader of the expedition, composed of 12 climbers. Ellie Potter, Pierre Bogard, Ari van der Kolk, Jason Terence, Catalan Mastan, Tiro Tulpan, Barrett Tamanini, Suresh Gulamarusu, Satyadeep Gupta, Amit Kumar, Vinay Bhushan, Brice Sharma complete the international team. And with them, 11 Sherpas led by Namje Sherpa, Pasang Sherpa, from the Nepalese tour operator, Grand Himalaya treks an expedition. The entire expedition also benefits from the support of other six men in the kitchen and food department, and four others are local porters. Hello, good morning. How are you? Good. Sherpas are essential people to any Himalayan expedition. Sherpa, in local translation, are the people of the East, referring to their origins to East of Tibet. For any climber, the ascent on an 8,000er means a dream and a fabulous experience, with huge sacrifices and risks. Very easily, everything can turn into a tragedy. From month to month, the configuration of the summiting routes must be updated. Local guides notice where the route is blocked. Snow, ice, wind alter the landscape. Constantly, blocks of ice of tens of tons from seracs are falling down. Avalanches block and change the morphology of the terrain. New crevices appear, meaning deep holes in ice and snow. In the Himalayan mountains and implicitly on the Kanchenjunga Massif, the heat of the day can reach 104 degrees Fahrenheit on glaciers due to the strong sun reflected by the white expanses. The snow is starting to melt. At night, it reaches frost. Negative 4 to negative 31 degrees, everything freezes again. With such temperature range, the paths change constantly. The wind can blow on Kanchenjunga over 8,000 meters in gusts of over 95 miles per hour. Which means you can be ripped off the trail and thrown down like a flake. Any unpredictable weather change can occur easily. So, the good weather window is vital. Kanchenjunga allows 33 good days of climbing attempts. If the ascent is not done then, the summit is missed. Everything has to go on time. 
without delays that can easily become fatal. April 9th, 2022. Again in Kathmandu, after four years very hot, cloudy, even if it rained the night before. Shankar is the name of the hotel we are staying in. Four stars. All the colleagues came. We even ate together tonight and we had a small meeting. Tomorrow is a day of relaxation and on Monday, we will fly to the mountains to Table Young, weather permitting. To reach Kanchenjunga Peak at 8,586 meters, you must first reach the base camp from 5,480 meters. Up there, from Kathmandu, you fly by small plane and then travel by off-road vehicles in the mountains. From Yusan village at about 2,160 meters, Kanchenjunga expedition will trek to the base camp. Then, from the base camp of 5,480 meters follows the culminating part of the expedition. There are four intermediate camps until top. From the last one, Camp 4, to the top of 8,586 meters and back, it costs 23 hours of climbing, if the weather is good. A terrible daylight effort, but there is still a long way to go. Kanchenjunga is a huge mountain and very far away. We managed to fly at 10 o'clock to Chandigarh, with the plane full among the fluffy and big clouds. And towards the end, I saw the Kanchenjunga massive in all its grandeur, very impressive. After landing, we boarded in two jeeps, seven crowded with luggage on top and we will arrive at 9.30 in Tebuyum. Most of the road is paved at 1,300 meters, but there are many damaged sections of landslides. We pass through many small villages. Lights are burning everywhere. There have been many tea plantations. We are practically on the border with India, where the homeland of tea is, but also of rice or wheat. So de la Torazden, la aproximativ 3000 de metri, după o etapă cam de 8 ore. Atât am mers astăzi, dar după cum se vede, este o locație foarte plăcută. Chiar am mâncat foarte bine și zona este înconjurată de rododendron care sunt în plină floare. April 15th, we are at Torangden, at 3000 meters. A great locality with accommodation and rooms with two beds made of wood, very clean, where we arrived after eight hours of trekking through the bamboo jungle. Huge rhododendrons with very large flowers, huge figs, and some kind of pines. It was tiring and hot. Almost all of us slipped once. The stones were very wet. We crossed many streams, even the big river on suspension bridges. April 2nd. It's been snowing since we got off the moraine. It was tiring and difficult to walk on the wet boulders, but we all got well to the middle camp where we changed our wet clothes and ate hot soup. The route was very winding on the moraine, but there were flags and baits made of stones. Otherwise, it was difficult to orient on the glacier. Suntem în continuare pe morena ghețarului care, după cum se vede, este uriașă. Pare că nu se mai termine. Vremea nu ține cu noi. Bă ușor cu măzărite, care intră peste tot. I saw about six sheep very carefully, because they were brown in fur and did not move. At the beginning of lunch, I have bacon boiled in garlic with bun. 
It was excellent. Our knees didn't bother anyone anymore. Now we go to the tents and see all together again at 6.30 for dinner. For any high altitude expedition, planning is vital. The Kanchenjunga expedition is on time. On April 21st, climbers have arrived at the base camp, the first success. Iată că am ajuns în sfârșit în tabăra de bază de la Kanchenjunga. Aici sunt majoritatea torturilor, sunt destul de multe expediții. Suntem la aproximativ 5.500 de metri și vremea a ținut cu noi, după cum se vede. Nu ne doare capul, suntem în formă. There are many tents in the base camp, but placed on three terraces. The place for tents is quite crowded. Our camp is excellent. The table tent is adorned with prayer flags, has grass on the floor, tables and chairs. I received juice and tea. Super good. Este o adevărată plăcere să te descalzi de bocancii de altitudine și să mergi descurs prin iarbă. Ua, ce bine! Mergea și un râu ca la negoi acum să stăm, dar deocamdată atât avea. Iarba artificială din cortul de masă. Iată și bucătăria noastră cu ustensilele ca la hotel de 5 stele. Hello! Se pregătește mâncarea de amiaz. Așteptăm să vedem ce surpriză ne fac. După cum se vede, avem o zi excelentă pentru mersul la deal. Este ceva bun sus, dar nu e foarte puternic. Hello, Nam Ya. Most accidents on the mountain occur after reaching the top. On the way back, physical and mental exhaustion, inattention, inability to concentrate, euphoria of success, delays on the route, climbing jams, everything that can make climbers caught unaware all lead to accidents, often fatal. At over 8,000 meters, you are in the death zone. If you get caught by night, you have many chances of freezing. There is neither time nor the possibility of being saved on such an altitude. At the final stage of summiting, each climber is on his own. Today I climbed Bye -bye. up to 8,500 meters with equipment and high altitude boots. A total torment, because it snowed continuously and the path goes between boulders. It slides all the time. I was without a stick or ice axe. After Crampon Point, the place where the crampons and the harness are mounted, it was very slopping, and it was not easy on fixed ropes or on frozen tracks, as everyone thinks is better for him. from the base camp, which is the largest and well supplied. For the ascent to the top of Kanchenjunga, the route follows Camp 1 at an altitude of 6,200 and Camp 2 at 6,200, Camp 3 at 6,800, and the last, Camp 4 at 7,500 meters. Between the intermediate and base camps, some ascents and descents have to be made for acclimatization and supplying of the camps. Such rotations take place between the camps 1, 2, 3, and the base. April 24th, Camp 1, 
6,200 meters. Christ is risen, another Easter on the mountain, in the snow, but not anywhere, but in the Himalayas. We didn't get Easter communion or class some red eggs, like our Romanian custom, because we left early for Camp 1, where we slept one night, then in Camp 2, and we will climb a little for Camp 3, after which we will return to base camp. That's the plan. We have three Sherpas with us, who set up tents and made us tea. The road was tiring. 800 meter level difference, a lot on fixed ropes, but it was worth it for the scenery and it was a lot of work. We met a lot of climbers and on the way down, we let them go down on the fixed ropes because they were in a hurry to get to their base camps. Certainly after several days spent in the mountains. The usual snow started in the afternoon and the clouds came down. I was lucky with good weather with a little wind. April 25th, Camp 2, 6,200 meters. The altitude is similar between the two camps, Camp 1 and 2. I did about an hour and a half, but very technical and exciting, on fixed ropes and crevices and huge serics. The clouds are rising again, and we may have snow again. This has already become usual. We are okay so far. We didn't go up today at all, because it's very hot, and we'll go up a bit tomorrow when it's cooler. That's how everyone decided it was better. Arian retired in the morning due to a headache, but I think he will go up with us again today, for the next round. I just ate some spaghetti and some bacon with onions, which Catalan carried until today. April 25th, it was snowing with thunder and lightning. It was more than 20 centimeters. It's good that I came to the kitchen tent because they started celebrating and there was no oxygen in the tent. I didn't want to say what could have happened. It was very cold in the morning, but with the sun, I went up for 30 minutes and came back with Caitlin. It was so cold I couldn't stop shaking. But anyway, they all returned to the tents. I gathered them and we started the technical descent to base camp. Slowly in a strong sun, we reached the tents well. Am ajuns în sfârșit în tabăra 2. Ninge, după cum se de pe cort. Asta e cortul nostru. Am încercat să-l aranjăm cât mai ok. Nu o să petrecem în principiu decât o noapte. Pentru că mâine, teoretic, o să mergem către tabăra 3. Asta dacă nu ninge foarte mult în seara asta. Suntem obosiți, dar acum ne facem niște ceai și sper să ne revenim cât de cât de mâncat. Nu cred că o să putem mânca, mai ales eu, pentru că gâtul este tot mai rău, înghit foarte greu. <laughs> Încep să și tușesc. O să vedem ce va fi. Vă salutăm. Să ne auzim cu bine. April 30th, Camp 2. As we were told in the evening after we recovered from the cold and the storm, in the morning around nine, we went to Camp 3 for acclimatization. We went for about two hours, where I found a place to stay and stop. I decided it was too tiring to go up for Camp 3. We stayed for half an hour, admired the landscape and headed back to the tents. After half an hour, they all returned tired. It was snowing hard and the slope was very steep. The next day we were going to sleep in Camp 3, but on the morning of May 1st, the snow continued with no sign of the top. So we decided to go back down to base camp. May 1st, base camp. 
Time flies like crazy. We were two nights and three days in Camp 2, and today we were turned on a big snow. On April 29th, we started the morning with the thought of sleeping in Camp 2. We walked slowly until we had a snowstorm. We kept putting clothes on, but we still froze. Luckily, we found a tent with state-of-the-art equipment from another expedition in Camp 1. Peter was frozen. He couldn't even see well, so I put him in the tent first to take his fluff that had fallen on the way off, but I managed to catch it. From here to Camp 2, I did about two more hours, many covered crevices and larger avalanches. Respira. Tô mais greu que tu mosso porra. Mais tarde. Não dá de fazer. Foi na tabora toi. Ajunho porra. Moro que este peixar um famoso. Super peixar. Tá bem nas patas. Hasta este. My throat still gets sore even though I gargled with warm salt water. I took strepsils in vain. I can only swallow or spit with great difficulty. May 4, base camp. Today our four Indian colleagues arrived by helicopter. They are acclimatized from Annapurna, and tonight in the afternoon we will have a meeting. Yesterday, Horia gave me some antibiotics, but I had diarrhea for each pill, so I decided not to take them anymore. I became very dehydrated. Prisoner in base camp. I think it sounds great because you're in base camp and you do not go anywhere because now you don't know when the weather is fine and have to go for the summit. There are already more and more talking about returning by helicopter. Only, we don't know how far we have to go on the glacier and through the infinite jungle, then by the jeep route on the dangerous roads. It got dark again and it snowed a little. You can't see anything up. May 5th, base camp. At 8 in the morning, we go for the summit. We are 22 people, 11 climbers and 11 Sherpas. Now is the height point of the expedition, the coveted moment, challenging the chances and possibilities for summiting. May 6th, Camp 2, ready. It was time to climb to the top. A great team like the national football team. We are in great shape, except for me who still has neck problems, but I see what I will do on the ascension. There aren't many people in Camp 2, we hardly get to terrible heat at first, then to a snowstorm with terrible frost. I had nothing to put on the cold. As the classic crossing to Camp 2, more and more stones and boulders started to fall in the place where you have to move fast, and there are many crevices, but we all escaped safely. Am făcut foarte mult, aproape 8 ore, pentru că la început a fost căldură, iar acum mi-a prins un frig, mă rog că am găsit un cort în care să ne-am depostit și să-l luăm haine pe noi. Dar corturile au rezistat, n am nici foarte mult. Sperăm să ne odinim și să trăim în continuare aceste momente din urmă. Să salutăm! May 7th, 2022, Camp 3. We woke up early to go to Camp 3, where we had just arrived. It was very hot. We stopped many times. The route is technical. It climbs on a lot of fixed ropes. I put my isomate over my head a few times and I wanted to give up the expedition altogether. I couldn't anymore. I was suffocating from the heat. After about two hours of waiting, the clouds finally came and we were able to continue to Camp 3. But with huge efforts, I arrived in the camp in a terrible cold. I kept avoiding what to take with me. It was sunset, an amazing spectacle, even if I couldn't do much due to the cold. Maved, Camp 4. 
directly from Camp 3 begins a terrible climb on fixed ropes, and so continues up almost the entire route to Camp 4, among many crevices but very spectacular. We arrived at Camp 4 with the thought that we will eat something, we will rest, and then go to the top. But around 6 p.m. we equipped ourselves and set on for the summit, with oxygen. The weather was very nice, the wind wasn't blowing. Pleacă spre vârf, fane în top, să vedem, super peisaj. I didn't even have to turn on the flashlight, but after about two hours of walking with the mask, I still couldn't swallow it all. I felt like I had barbed wire in my throat. I was telling Caitlin that I couldn't continue and I returned to Camp 4. He can continue if he feels good. I returned to Camp 4 and Lakpa, the Sherpa, came after me. Nu am apis să se oprească vântul. Iar eu pe la 9 m-am întors pentru că nu puteam înghiți deloc, era un timp total să merg mai departe. Am zis că nu e bine așa. Gata cu ceilalți, am continuat. Acum am vorbit cu șerpașul și se pare că mai au o oră până la vârf. Deci în principiu pe la 6, jumătate, 7 s-ar putea să ajungă pe la vârf. Iar șerpașul a zis că noi doi mai bine să coborâm spre tabăra 2 pentru că o să fie mult mai multe de dus la vale și este mai sigur să mergem încet încet să descoperim corzile fixe pentru că s-au acoperit azi noapte. O să vedem ce se întâmplă. Sper să ajungă băieții pe vârf. Le țin pumnii. Suntem la 1156 After sustained efforts, Ellie Potter, John Grill, Ari van der Kolk, Pieter Bolgard, Catalan Mastan, Barat Tamanene, Satya Deep Gupta reached the top of Kanchenjunga at 8,586 meters. Another eight Sherpas also successfully reached the summit.
sufletul pan am învățat tot ce știu la alpinism For the first time, two Dutchmen summited the Kanten Junga, Ari van der Kolk and Pieter Bogart. But unfortunately, an incident overshadows the ascension. Vreza da? Pe colegii noștri care sunt implicați într-o operațiune de salvare a unui coleg din Olanda. Around midnight, Pieter Bogart is hit by a piece of ice, the size of a dice, exactly in his left eye. He loses his contact lens and, worse, his eye is completely blind. Peter continues the ascent, reaches the top. When descending around 8,400 meters, Pieter loses his balance and after a fall of 30 meters, he is seriously injured in the face. At such altitude, a serious injury is fatal. With a miraculous chance, however, Pemba Nuru and Lapka Chiring Sherpas managed to get the injured man down to Camp 4, then the next day to Camp 3, and then Camp 2. From there, he is taken by a helicopter driven by the famous climber Simon Mori. Eventually, Pieter arrives at the hospital in Kathmandu and recovers. Saving Pieter Buolgard at such an altitude was a miracle. Pemba Nuru and Lapka Turing performed one of the most daring and impressive high-altitude rescues and possibly the highest rescue ever made on Kanchenjunga. May 11, 2022. Then the helicopter came from Peter from Camp 2 because he was in a state that would not allow him to come by foot. Now we're getting our luggage ready to fly tomorrow if the weather is okay with the Indian colleagues. Catalan was a bit affected by the fall of Peter. He could have died, especially by the two hours for his recovery and putting him back on the path. Campionu! Vine Mocaniza! Bravo! Last few weeks, few days more, when we start climbing, we become a family. We share Sherpa power, cigarettes together, water together, coffee together, same tents, same kitchen, taken by the wind in Camp 2. And this, I feel with all of you, all of you. Same, same family. And thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Look how it's beautiful this morning. I'm going to the mountain top. I've already come the first helicopter. I'm going to go to the long way. I'm climber, in the end, his true victory always means getting home.